Hi, my name is Miloš and welcome to Element 14 Presents. Today we're gonna make a printer cabinet, but we're gonna make it smart. We're gonna make it super safe using an RCD, using fuses, turning it on or off, using relays. We're gonna put sensors in it, we're gonna measure environment stuff, we're gonna me measure power consumption, and we're gonna make a user interface to control everything through a web page. Let's get right to it. If you've seen me in any of the previous videos, you know I use my 3D printer a lot. Whether it's for Perry the Platypus bot or the MicroDrone project or any of the other projects, you've probably seen me use some 3D printed parts. So my idea for this build is to make a big printer cabinet to store my printer and the filament dryer that we built in the previous video and let's make it smart. How smart? I'll show you that in the drawing and you'll get a sense uh, along the video what I want to do with it. To begin the drawing, let's first write down the requirement list for this. So I want to split the whole cabinet into a few areas. The first area, or the upper area, is the area that I want to house the two 3D printers, or a 3D printer and a dryer. In the middle area, I want to have spare parts, tools, and the CFS. The CFS is the multi-material unit for my printer, the Creality K1C. And in the bottom area, a lot of filament. I've been printing for 5 years at this point, so I have around 50 or 60 spools and I want to be able to fit all of those spools there and even more. Now uh, let's get to the drawing itself. This is how I imagine the actual outline and how I want to separate everything. First we have the printer here, so the K1C. Underneath it we have the CFS. I also want this thing to be mobile so I'm gonna put it on caster wheels. Besides the CFS we have the parts and tools. And on the bottom, as I've already mentioned, all of the filament. In the top, I also want to add the light just so I can see more clearly when working on the 3D print. And of course, to the left of the printer, we have another spot for either the filament dryer or another 3D printer. The final thing we need to do is figure out the dimension. So I want to make it around 120 centimeters wide and around 190 centimeters high and around 60 centimeters deep. You may be asking why these dim dimensions and it's rather simple. I just need it to fit through the door and I want to be able to move it by hand. So the idea with this is that it's a completely mobile station so if I want to change workshops or anything like that I can just roll this thing out through the door. Plans for this cabinet are rather simple and I've just modeled it in Fusion 360 so I know my cut list and how to assemble it. If you're interested in making a similar thing you'll have the step files down below on Element 14 community. But you might be wondering, Milos, where are all of the smart features that you talked about? Well, we first need to build the cabinet and then we can start implementing our electronics. So let's get right on to the building part of this video and then we can do electronics. <music> Making the cabinet was really fun. As you can see clearly from the clip of me wearing basketball shorts and a t-shirt, it was a really nice and warm summer day. It was maybe around 25-30 degrees Celsius. And it was mostly sunny and you'll see clouds come in and come out uh, through the time lapse which looks really cool. Uh, I d made the whole thing out of OSB sheets which were thick 15 millimeters and some planks either 30 by 50 millimeters or 40 by 90 millimeters. The goal was to get the back OSB to the bottom and to build it up from there since that was the largest surface area and it would give me the best access to actually work on the whole thing just going around. This whole thing turned out way heavier than I anticipated, but I managed to get it down alone and you'll see how I did that at the end of the clip. In hindsight, I wish I had started working earlier on the build because like this, I started around 1 p.m. and had to end the build somewhere during the night and that just wasn't as fun as working in the daylight. I didn't really want to drag it out through two days, so I just pushed on and finished the whole thing. Enjoy the rest of the clip and after this is completely assembled, we'll get to the electronics. That was a fun one day build, I'm really happy I managed to get it all done in one day, but now it's time to do our specialty electronics. So I made a small requirements list of the things I want to have. I want to have emergency stops for both machines, whether it's a printer or it's a filament dryer, 
I want to me measure power consumption, I want to have an RCD device, I also want to have environmental sensors and I want to be able to turn them on or off uh, remotely, meaning from our web-based uh, UI. How are we going to do that? Let me draw out my plan and then we'll go into testing and finally into making it happen. Let's turn this printer cabinet into a smart printer cabinet. To begin, let's continue the requirement list from where we left off. First, we need to add a panel with an RCD, fuses and relays. To control all of this, we will use a Raspberry Pi and we will add some temperature and humidity sensors to see how our filament will bear since filament can get impacted negatively in high humidity areas. Besides that, I also want to add emergency stops for, well, emergency cases when we want to stop a printer. And I want to add an additional live camera view using a Raspberry Pi camera. On both sides of the cabinet, we're going to have these emergency stops. In the back behind the 3D printers, we're going to have our panel with electronics since that's already just some wasted space. And in the corner, we're going to have a Pi camera too for an additional live view angle besides the one camera in the printer. And we're going to add two environmental sensors, the DH222, one at the upper area where the printers are and one down below where the filament is just to track the parameters there. That would sum up how we're going to turn this printer cabinet into a smart printer cabinet. We're at the bench stand and we're going to test out the current measurement. So I'm going to use the current measurement probe uh, like this one here. I'm going to have two of them so I can uh, measure the power. This test is going to use this amp meter and this is a voltmeter that's uh, showing the RMS voltage of the current clamp. Let's first plug this in and be careful since we will have live wires in the system. And to test it out, I will use this uh, heater. So this heater has two heaters inside, a smaller and a bigger one. Let's first turn on the bigger one. And you can see the current jumping up and you can also see the voltage uh, jumping up as well. And you can see that if we multiply this voltage by 10, we will get this. I also have uh, the Apico connected here that's measuring the same voltage as this and now on your screen you can see the pop-up of how that current measurement looks like with the pico reading that voltage and converting it to current as you see it looks pretty nice as the heater is heating up the current consumption will grow as you see and if we turn on the bigger heater you can see a big jump and you can see that the pico is following it pretty nicely uh, we're just going to have two of these and I'm just going to use the Pico as an ADC because as I already mentioned the ADS I squared C ADC just wasn't fast enough. We didn't have a lot of electronics to test because most it's just pin to pin connections. The only thing we had to test were the current transformers and as you've seen they're working rather great. The only uh, downside I had was that I had to use two different current transformers. One is a 10 amp and one is the, a 50 amp only due to the availability of when I was ordering. But either way, that would be the only critical electronics. Let's now check the full electronics diagram of how everything is going to be connected. And then we can finally assemble the panel and test it. Let's take a full look at the electronics. So first we have the input power from the wall, of course. That goes through a main fuse, that goes through an RCD, and then that goes through three separate fuses. Uh, one of the fuses is directly only for the Raspberry Pi and the network switch and we want that always to be on when the system is on unless there is some kind of fault here. Uh, besides that we have two more fuses for the two printers which have to go first through relays, our current clamps and emergency stops. So emergency stops are great things if you when you're experimenting and see something going wrong you can just hit an emergency stop and you know that the power is off. Besides that we have the low power uh, low voltage side. Uh, we have the Raspberry Pi 4 which is the brain of this and it will be running node red with a graphical user interface. For the current clamps we will be using a Raspberry Pi Pico just because it's easier to implement than using an ADC I2C. Over I2C I tried that but didn't get a good enough results so Pico was, uh, was the next best option. Besides that, we have the buck converter to step down the 24 volts that we need for the relays anyway to 5 volts for powering the Pi. We have the electronics for the current transformers that you've seen already. We have the simple connections for the DH22 and we have the circuitry for the relays. 
which is just a MOSFET stage to actually turn on, on or off the relay with a flyback diode. Uh, this here is a work in progress for, detect, uh, for connecting a smoke detector, but uh, I didn't get it to work in the end. But let's focus on the main stuff now and put together the whole panel. So here is a code for the Raspberry Pi, it's just for scripts written in Python. I've had ma uh, many attempts here to try to get the RMS reading using the uh, I2C ADC, but it just wasn't fast enough. So I went with the Pico as you've seen, and this is the script that just grabs the data from the serial port and publishes it to MQTT topics, which we then read using Node-RED, which, we'll, which I will show you in the next clip. We also have a camera stream. Uh, Python uh, script which essentially uses the Pi camera as uh, essentially an IP camera and we just grab that data and also use it in Node-RED and besides that I have an RPI info which gets the CPU usage, CPU temperature so we can keep an eye on the Raspberry Pi and one more script for the sensors where we measure the temperature and humidity on both sensors and again we just push that to topics, MQTT topics and read that in Node-RED. I'll jump now to Node-RED and show you how that setup looks and how the end graphical interface looks like. Now we're in Node-RED and I'm gonna show you how this setup looks. Uh, the most important part here are uh, these two nodes right here. So this is the live camera feed and you can see how I implemented just having that IP address. And a similar thing is done for the K1C since it has a web interface for controlling the printer wirelessly. So I wanted to have everything in one master terminal. Besides that, we have some simple control directly from Node-RED for the pins. This is how we actually trigger on or off the relays. And if we look at here, uh, we have the topics uh, that from the nodes, uh, from the sensor, sorry, for, from the temperature and humidity sensors, and they are feeding that to gauges and also to graphs in the second flow where we can have some longer term data, both for temperature, for humidity, and also for the general Raspberry Pi performance, like CPU temperature and CPU usage. We also have the current uh, transformers here that are measuring actually the current, as you've seen in the video already, and I'm also plotting them on the main graph, just so we can keep a track on uh, how that works. Before we install everything, I wanted to test everything on the bench to make sure everything works essentially. So you can see the current state of the panel and I've connected our heater again like we did for the power test here to only uh, one of the relays and to both of the coils. So we can make sure that they're showing the same number or roughly the same. Okay, now we have uh, power. So first we flip on this uh, uh, fuse. Then we do the RCD. We can also check if it works and it does. And we need these two relays. This relay will actually uh, get power to our 24 volt power supply. It will power the P and our low voltage electronics. And this relay will power our heater. So let's wait for everything to boot up and then we'll jump to the graphical interface. Okay, and we're live now. You can now see the interface. You can see my hand moving here. And that's just the P camera on the same mount as my phone filming the panel. And here you can see the controls uh, down here. Uh, so you can see the temperature, you can see the humidity of for both sensors, uh, which are here. They're showing roughly the same temperature, which is to, to be expected, and the two current gauges. So also here on the top right, you can see the printer control. That's just the web interface, and I put that, as you've seen, uh, just embedded it into my control page. So now if we go here, and this is the printer uh, 2 power, 
you can see that this light has turned on as well as this relay and if you look here you can see that the current is starting to go up as well as the current here on the graph there is also another page here this is called the data page this is where we can monitor more data uh, for longer periods like CPU temperature, CPU uh, usage, stuff like that, as you can see here. So that would be it. It all works, everything that they need. Let's just turn off the heater. Eh, there it goes, it's on zero. Uh, the only thing left to do now is to install everything on the printer cabinet and do a full test then. To finish up our project with everything tested on the batch, only one thing is left to do and that is to roll another time-lapse of me actually installing all of the hardware onto the printer cabinet. Let's go do that and finally test it out. With all of the testing complete, it's finally time to install everything. As you can see, I've had this cabinet for quite some time already by the giant wall, uh, wall of benches, the printer, here is our filament dryer as well uh, that you've seen in the previous video. So all, uh, all that's left to do now is to install this thing. I will be installing it up here because of the Raspberry camera and because of ease of access. So I'll put you guys on a time lapse and you can follow along to see how this progress goes and then we can finally test the whole system. And our project is finally done. As you can see the cabinet is rather large and it fits nicely both the printer and our filament dryer. And in the back here we have our, the system that we've designed and made. It all works great. Uh, of course we're gonna test it out a bit. I already run some tests to check the stability. Of course it was a benchy first. And the most important thing, the emergency stop buttons work as you see. Let's get to testing and wrap this up. This is how it looks like uh, in real life. Uh, this is just loading now because as you see here the Creella TK1C power is turned off so it's not on. But if we for example try turning on the light, you can see that it comes on. There is of course a bit of a delay but it really doesn't matter for this. On your screen now you can see a sped up version of the control interface while the bench is being printed. We already tested everything on the bench, it works and you've just seen the previous clip. I just wanted to show how this looks on a longer time period. Some things we can see here are the temperature differences between the top compartment where the printers are and the bottom compartment where the filament is. There is already a few degrees difference just from the printer running and you can see that the humidity is rather high. Also we can see that the power consumption with the cool plate it's usually under 200 watts for my printer. So this is working rather nicely. Uh, one thing that I'll be changing for sure is the 50 amp current lamp. It's too noisy as, as you can see by the current spikes on the first gauge and I've just limited it to not show any power unless the power is above 500 watts since it won't be used for anything weaker than that and it is just too noisy for anything like that. Thanks so much for watching the video. At this point of the video I would usually just hold a project like this and show it to you but since you've seen how much I struggled to actually just get it down and into the building, I think I'm just gonna leave it there. So I'm really happy with how it works, with everything we've implemented there. And if you're interested in building something similar, you can find all of the files linked down below in the Element 14 community. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And until next time, see ya!